So uh, now, now we have almost finished with the discussion on matrix and just to conclude I will do, do some practice problems. In particular, I will look at uh, what are called as rotational matrices. Okay. So the problem is, the. I will just state the problem in the following way. So suppose you consider a vector in 3D and let us say that vector is given by x, y, z. Okay. How does this vector transform when it is rotated about z axis by angle theta? Okay, and uh, what I said is analyze this problem in terms of matrices and identify key properties of the transformation matrix and repeat for rotation about other axes. Okay. So, so this is an illustrative exercise okay, in use of rotation matrices okay. and, uh, and, uh, and so, so let us just, let's just look at what the problem says. So you have some coordinate system x, y, z. I will show this as x, this as y and let us say z is a plane that is coming outside the third coordinate system and now, now what you have is you have some vector, this is the point x, y, z, x, y, z, this is your vector and you are rotating it about the z axis. So, you imagine that you are rotating it by angle theta and you get a new vector. Now obviously the length of this new vector should be the same as the original vector. I will call this x prime, y prime, z prime. This is rotated by angle theta about the z axis. So now, now what, what can you say about, uh, about this x prime, y prime, z prime and how it is related to x, y, z. So, so this is the basic problem that we are asking. Okay. Now, uh, in order to do this, you can, you can immediately say one thing. If you are rotating about the z axis, then the z coordinate will not change. Okay. So, this, so you can immediately say that z prime has to be equal to z. Okay. Now, what about x prime and y prime? So, x prime and y prime, you can actually easily find out. You can, uh, you can, you can just do simple simple cosine algebra and you can see that uh, this is my x and this is my x prime okay and uh, you can you can easily see that uh, that uh, i mean if you want you can use uh, plane polar coordinates okay uh, but you know even that is not required you can easily see that that x prime can be written as x times cos theta plus minus y times sin theta. Okay. So how do you uh, how do you show this? Okay. Now uh, I as I said, it's not very difficult to show. Okay. So suppose you had used uh, spherical coordinates, and let's say this angle was theta naught. Okay. Then uh, what you would have is you would write uh, x so in plane polar coordinates okay and let's say the length of this vector is r okay x equal to r cos theta naught and y equal to r sin theta naught so this is how you would define. So x and remember this is your y coordinate. This is your y. This is your x. Okay, and this is your y prime. Okay. Similarly, uh, what you'll have is uh, so so this is what I have. What you had and what is what is x prime? X prime is nothing but r cos cos of theta zero plus theta. And so, so what is this equal to? This is equal to r cos theta zero cos theta minus r sin theta zero 
sin theta okay and now r cos theta 0 is nothing but uh, x so i can write this as x cos theta minus r sin theta 0 is y so i can write y sin theta which is what we had here okay what else can you do you can also write the y prime so i can also write y prime is equal to and uh, and by the same by the same method what i'll get is uh, y prime equal to x sin theta plus y cos theta okay so so our three transformations are basically uh, z prime equal to z x prime equal to x cos theta minus y sin theta and y prime equal to x sin theta plus y cos theta okay so so i can write this in the following way so i can write uh, x prime y prime z prime is equal to some matrix times x y z what is this matrix so 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 we had uh, we just look at this x prime equal to x cos theta minus y sin theta so x prime so this will be nothing but cos theta this will be minus sin theta and it is independent of z so this will be 0 and similarly this will be sin theta cos theta 0 and this will be 0 0 1 so z prime equal to z it is independent of x and y so you get so you can write these three equations in this matrix form okay this is called this this is a rotation matrix matrix i will use it i will use the notation r z theta so this is rotation about z axis by angle theta okay so i can express this transformation in this form okay now uh, you can clearly see that r z theta is orthogonal so so check r z theta is ortho orthogonal matrix so how do you check it is orthogonal you can just take uh, take any two rows so let's say you take the or or let's say you take the first row and multiply it by the second uh, take a dot product of the first two rows okay so so if i take uh, dot product of of first two rows okay is equal to so what i'll get is cos theta into sin theta i'll get minus sin theta cos theta plus 0 into 0 so this is equal to 0 similarly you take dot product of second and third row you'll get 0 okay you take dot product of first and third row you'll get 0 you take dot product of first and second column you'll get 0 dot product of first and third column dot product of second and third column all of them will be zero so dot product of any two rows or columns is zero okay now further you can see that uh, you can see that norm of first row okay so this is equal to cos square theta plus sin square theta equal to 1 okay norm of first row is just row dotted just the sum of squares of the of the coefficient and that is cos square plus theta plus sin square theta similarly no no norm of second row norm of third row they are all one okay so we say that any two different rows are orthogonal and the norm of each row is one so therefore this rz theta is an orthogonal matrix okay so we have seen and it is orthogonal so it will preserve the length and obviously it will preserve the length because it is a rotation okay now uh, what else can we do now let us talk about rotating about what about rotating about about let me call it r x phi this is rotation about x axis by angle phi okay now in this case i don't need to do this in detail but you can immediately write rx of phi 
as this matrix. Now, since you are rotating about the x axis, the x coordinate will remain unchanged. Okay, so, you have a 1, 0, 0 here. Okay, and then you will have this will look exactly like your other matrix, but instead of theta, you have phi cos a phi minus sin phi sin phi cos phi. So, this is a matrix for rotation about x axis by angle phi. Okay. And uh, similarly, you can do for y axis also. So, y axis by angle, I will just use another Greek letter psi, okay. I will write it as R y of psi. Okay. So, this will look like Now, the y coordinate is left unchanged. So, so here you will have 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. Now, uh, what you will have here is cos psi minus sin psi and you have cos psi sin psi. So, these are your three rotational matrices. So, you have the R z of theta which is rotation about z axis and now you have 0, 0, 1 along the in the z direction. Okay. Now, here when you have r x of phi then you have 1, 0, 0 this is so the x coordinate is unchanged and here the y coordinate is unchanged. Okay. So, these are the three matrix matrices of rotations. Now, you can ask uh, what happens what happens when you take uh, let us say you take you take x y z and first you do r z of theta, then I get something that is x prime y prime z prime. Then I again do by r x of phi, then I will get something like uh, x double prime y double prime z double prime and then I do by r y of psi. I will get x triple prime, y triple prime, z triple prime. Okay. So, I imagine doing successively doing three different rotation operations. Okay. Now, you can easily show again you do not, uh, you can show that uh, x triple prime, y triple prime, z triple prime. Okay. So, this is after three rotations. Okay. So, I can write this as r y of psi times x double prime y double prime z double prime, but x double prime y double prime z double prime I can write as r x of phi times x prime y prime z prime. So, I write it as r x of phi times x prime y prime z prime. Now, x prime y prime z prime I can write as r z of theta times x y z times Okay. Now, now this is nothing but uh, this is matrix multiplication. Okay. So, what you have is you can find the net effect of multiple rotations just by multiplying the individual rotations. Okay. So, the net effect of all these three rotations is essentially a matrix multiplication of individual rotations and so, and so if I call this uh, r this is r y of psi r x of phi r z of theta. This is the net effect of three rotations about z x and y. Okay. So, I can write this, uh, this matrix corresponding to this total rotation, I can write it in this way and uh, what you can do is you can actually calculate this, you can calculate what is R. Okay. But again, again it is straightforward, you just have to multiply the these three matrices, you have to multiply this matrix, this matrix and this matrix in the particular order. So, if you do that, you have to preserve the order, you know matrix multiplication is not something that is commutative. Okay. So, you have to first rotate by about z, then by about x and then then about y. Okay. So, if you do that then uh, what you will get is that this r 
is equal to I will just I will just write the final result. Okay, now, uh, it looks a little complicated, but it is it is simply a matrix multiplication sin theta sin phi sin psi plus cos theta cos psi and then you have cos theta sin phi sin psi minus sin theta sin psi and you have cos phi sin psi sin theta cos phi cos theta cos phi minus sin phi and then you have sin theta sin phi cos psi minus cos theta sin psi and finally, you have uh, cos theta sin phi cos psi plus sin theta sin phi and uh, the last term is cos phi cos psi. Okay. So, this is the matrix corresponding to three successive rotations first about the z axis by theta then about the x axis by phi and then about the y axis by psi. Okay. So, now you can easily verify that this is also orthogonal. Okay. So, let us just take the first and second rows and uh, take a dot product of the first or let us take a dot product of the first two rows. Okay. And uh, here you will get lot of terms. Okay. So, you will get terms having uh, you will you will have I will just write the I will just write the terms. So, you have the first term that looks like sin square theta you have and then you have sin phi cos phi sin psi okay. and you have another term that is looks that looks like sin theta cos theta cos psi cos phi. So, this is from the first element of these two rows. Okay. Then from the second element you will get a term that looks like uh, cos square theta. So, I will just write it below. So, it will become obvious cos square theta sin phi cos phi sin psi Okay, and you can clearly see that one has a sin square theta, other has a cos square theta. So, when you add these two, this will go away. Okay. And you have a minus, you have a sin theta cos theta sin psi cos phi. Okay. And uh, the last term looks like minus, so this should be cosine of psi. So, there was a small typo in that and uh, and so this will become cosine of psi, cosine of psi. Okay. So, uh, and then and then you have minus the last term will have cosine of phi, sine of psi, sine of phi. Okay. Now, uh, this is a dot product of the first two rows. Now, you can immediately see that uh, these two terms actually cancel each other these two terms will cancel each other. Now, if I add up these two terms, then uh, what I will get is I uh, will get sin phi cos phi sin psi. So, if I just add up sin square plus cos square is 1 and then I have minus the same thing cos phi sin psi sin phi. So, this is equal to 0. So, what we showed is that uh, these two rows are orthogonal to each other and you can similarly show that all other rows are orthogonal to each other. So, and obviously it should be because this is a rotation and rotation preserves the length. Okay. So, we have shown one type of rotation matrices there are actually many other types of rotational matrices that are used in, uh, in, the, 
various branches of science and engineering, but this illustrates the power of matrix methods in for solving problems. Okay, so, with that I will conclude this uh, module on matrices and uh, I and with this we have concluded the whole discussion on uh, in linear algebra. So, in the subsequent weeks we will start talking about differential equations. Thank you.